What if I told you that the planets don't move in circles? For thousands of years, astronomers believed the heavens were perfect and circles were the perfect shape. I mean, who doesn't love a circle? It's neat, it's symmetrical, but it's wrong. Johannes Kepler, armed with his mentor Tycho Brahe's mountain of data and some serious math skills, discovered that the planets were doing something much more interesting and developed the laws of planetary motion. An ellipse is basically a circle that got sat on slightly stretched with the sun sitting at one focus instead of the center. Now why didn't anyone notice before? Well the difference between a circle and an ellipse in the planetary sense is tiny and ancient astronomers didn't exactly have telescopes or excel spreadsheets. When the planet swings close to the sun it goes pedal to the metal. Further out it eases off and slows down. Kepler's fancy way of saying this is planets sweep out equal areas in equal times. Think of it this way, if you draw a line from the planet to the sun, the slice of space it covers in a month is always the same, whether the planet is zooming past the sun or chilling way out on the far side. The further the planet, the longer the year. Now that seems obvious, Pluto isn't exactly racing around the block. It takes 248 years to get around the sun. But Kepler found it wasn't just a trend, it was a precise relationship. If he cubed the planet's distance and divided it by the square of the period, the number was always the same. That constant became a cosmic rule book. This told us that the further the planet it is, the longer it takes to orbit in a predictable way. So three laws, three elegant rules that turned the messy sky into an orderly universe. Kepler's insight didn't just explain planetary motion, they paved the way for Newton's laws of gravity and centuries later Einstein's theory of relativity. Not bad for a man with a telescope, a pile of data and a courage to question perfection.